Hello Pilots and Ground Crew, welcome back to my channel again. Well, uh, just a quick intro this time, that's why I've just stuck the camera on the side. Uh, I've uh, got another email and <laughs> basically the uh, guy says to us, George, can you tell us what the heartbeat monitor is in the uh, motors tab on beta flight? And I thought, what the hell are you on about, pal? Right, and I actually had to plug a quad in and go onto beta flight and then the uh, proverbial penny dropped the bloody heartbeat monitor. Right, I'll put a picture up. Right, it's the monitor for your motors basically. <laughs> right, and he wanted to know what the heartbeat monitor was for beta flight and what it did. Well, uh, he also said, right, explain it simply. Well, it, it's not that difficult to understand, but it's in, it's not, it doesn't just do one thing, right? It does different things, right? And you can check, it's for checking your motors, basically. It's for checking your motors, right? But the most popular thing it's used for, now I'm going to go onto the computer and I'll show you a demonstration, I'll plug in one of my quads, that I believe one of the motors is on its way out, so it'll be perfect one to show you. But the most common thing it's used for is what I just mentioned, checking to see if your motors have much life left in them, if they're on the way out basically. Right? But it does do more than that. But because this is a new pilot and uh, my old catchphrase is super simple, super basic, I'm going to keep it as simple and as basic as possible and just show you what it's most commonly used for which is, as I just said, again, checking if your motors are on the way out, in other words, getting ready to be knackered, right? And if there's people watching who know about it, please don't leave comments saying, oh, you forgot this and you forgot that, oh, and you can check for your vibrations on your motors and you can check this and that, and yeah, I know, right? But this guy do not seem to understand anything about it, and he's a new pilot, so... It's a case of uh, trying to help him out. Oh, he's called Thomas, by the way. I thought, what an old-fashioned name. And then I thought, George. I'm called George, and I'm thinking he's got an old-fashioned name. <laughs> yeah. So, Thomas. Uh, Thomas FPV. Uh, Thomas. Uh, jump onto the computer. I'll plug a quad in. And uh, talk you through what it is. And hopefully it'll help some more new pilots on the heartbeat monitor. I love that. I'm going to nick that. The motor heartbeat monitor. Okay then, let's jump over to the computer and uh, talk you through how to check your motors to see if they're still good. It's also a good thing if you get brand new motors, it's worth doing this as well. Just in case you've been sold a dud. You get me. Alright, but we'll talk you through that on the computer. Okay then, uh, let's uh, well, jump over to the computer. Okay then, pilots and ground crew, I've just plugged in a little micro 3-inch job. Let's go over to the motor tabs and find the heartbeat monitor. Oh, look, a heartbeat monitor. Isn't that cool? Uh, I suppose he said that because if I just move my quad about, watch the uh, that little... Whoa, watch that little red line as I move my quad about. It's like a heartbeat monitor. That's for when you... Uh, well, that's for when you're doing a different job, <coughs> calibrating gyros and things like that. But, as I said, oh, excuse me one moment, <coughs> bloody hell. As I said, uh, going to deal with the most basic fundamental use for this uh, heartbeat monitor. <laughs> right, go to your top right corner here, right, and it'll, you can choose either gyro or acceler, which I believe stands for accelerometer, right. But these are the uh, numbers you want to be looking at, right? Your X, your Y, and your Z. You can ignore that bottom, that green line, that R, R, M, S, right? And leave that on 20 MS and leave the scale on 2, okay? These numbers here you want to be dealing with, the back numbers, the ones in brackets, where this one says minus 1.13. Hopefully you can see that. Right, but what we need to do is first of all plug in a quad, make sure you've got the props turned off because we're going to be powering it up. So I'll just plug in the battery, one minute. Yeah. 
Right, <clears throat> got the battery powered in. Now I'm going to this part here that says reset and I'm going to reset it so everything down here goes to zero. And now uh, turning my motors on, all this says, you've probably read it a million times, make sure you've took your props off. Then go to your first motor tab, right, for motor one and power it up. Go to full power, but only leave it at full power for a couple of uh, seconds or so. And then as you look back over here on the XYZ, you'll see zero point on my particular motor. This is motor one on my quad. Yours will be different. It, on the X, it says 0 0.48. On the Y, 0 0.26. And on the Z, minus 0 0.8, which is bloody great. Now, what do these numbers mean? Well, Forget the first little number, first of all, because if that gets activated for any reason, your motor's no good, throw your motor away. You really be looking at the point whatever, like here, 0 0.48, 0 0.26, 0 0.08. All right? Now, this is an indicator of how good or how bad your motors are. When they come brand new, they all want to be reading round about well shall we say 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 somewhere around there 0 0.3 something like that as a brand new motor now between 0 0.1 and 0 0.40 now that's 48 but 40 they're great motors you're gonna have no problems everything's gonna be working fan dabby dozy between 0 0.50, 0 0.50, to 0 0.70, your motors are okay. You know what I mean? They're not at the best efficiency, they're okay though, so don't panic. Now, between 0 0.80 and 0 0.99, your motor's not good. They're on the way out and they're not going to uh, give you as much power and they're not going to be as efficient and basically they're on the way out and you want to start getting your pennies together to buy a replacement motor. Anything above 0 0.99 as in which would be next which would be 1 where the 0 would turn into a 1 throw your motor away. Sooner or later it's going to fail in flight and you could end up smashing your quad up as well so throw your motor away. Don't use it on anything else. Right now I'm going to move on to motor 2. I'll do all four while I'm here because I believe I've got a problem with one of my motors so it's a good live test at the same time. As I'm moving on to motor 2 you must up here reset so that everything goes back to zero. Now we'll go up to motor 2. And down again. And what have we got? On the X we've got 0 0.04. Brilliant. Alright, then we've got 0 0.03 on the Y. Brilliant. And 0 .0 0 0.34, which is still absolutely brilliant. Almost new. Alright, so we'll move on to motor 3. I think I've got a problem on one of these and we'll find out when we get there. Moving on to motor 3. And on the X we've got 0 0.03, 0 0.22 and z minus 0 0.4. So that motor 3. Now we know motor 1, 2 and 3 is spot on. Now I'll reset again. Now I've got a funny feeling here. Motor 4 is going to be uh, slightly different for the simple reason... I have been feeling a bit of judder and this is what you will feel in the air you'll see your quad juddering a little bit because your motors are out working to the maximum uh, proficiency a lot of people will say oh, all you need to do is raise your D's or something like that which will work if you haven't got your quad set up right and you're using new motors and stuff but I always say check this first right? because your motor could be knackered before you start messing about with your D gain and things like that so let's try motor 4 now. Yep, 
No, Motor Force, Motor Force, bloody greatest bot, the best actually, and I was thinking Motor Force wrong. So now I do know, right, because of the judder I was having, so now I do know I have to mess about with my pids a little bit. Right, because uh, Motor 4 is minus 0 0.04, and then on the Y we've got 0 0.03, and on the Z, or Z, 0 0.02. So actually Motor 4 is the best motor out of all of them. And I was thinking that was the one that I had a problem with. So I was wrong. So there you go then. That's what you need to think about, all right, for testing your motors. As I said, I'll go through it one more time, all right, because for new pilots, all right, yeah, you can rewind, but sometimes it's always best to hear it twice, all right, and I'll go through it quick. Right, on your XYZ, forget the bottom, you're looking at the last three digits that are in brackets, okay, and you want to see 0 point whatever, 0 point whatever, 0 point whatever. Now, anything between 0 0.1 to 0 0.40 is pretty great. 0 0.50 to 0 0.70 it's okay but not really it's it's okay and that's as much as I'd say on that okay and 0 0.80 to 0 0.99 not good your motor is on its way out and you really want to get your pennies together and buy a new motor and anything above 0 0.99 when it moves over to 1 and anything higher than one actually don't fly don't don't even go near your motor take it off throw it in the bin don't keep it don't anything all right so as soon as you get to 0 0.80 all right you want to save up and get a new motor because it's starting to go right i hope that uh, explains the heartbeat tab or one function of the heartbeat tab it does have other functions you can test if your motors are balanced and things like that but i wanted to cover the absolute well the most common use for this motor heartbeat tab thing <laughs> i love that <laughs> i am i'm nicking that this heartbeat reader but as you look at it you'll see different things you'll see voltage here and amp drawer and things like that and up here in the top right corner you'll see wiki if you click on that there you go it'll take you give it a second it'll take you to the wikipedia page and you can get loads of information about that and you'll be able to find out all sorts of stuff to do with beta flight and everything right but especially that particular tool okay but you'll be able to go through all your different things it's well worth reading i've had to read it right and uh, but, and i don't mind making videos to help people right but uh, I've read the stuff, lots of other people have read it, so it's well worth going through. But I do understand, right, videos are much easier. Sometimes you can read stuff three or four times and it still doesn't sink in. But if somebody explains a video, it's, uh, it sort of sinks in a lot easier. Well, it does with me. Watching a video is actually better for me than somebody trying to explain something. Like, I don't know, changing an engine in a car. Right, I'd rather watch a video of somebody doing it than somebody explain it to me in a classroom, so to speak. Anyway, so I hope that helps. And uh, the final thoughts go to the gentleman in the chair. Okay then, pilot, and ground crew, and Thomas FPV who wanted this video. That is the most common use, right, for the uh, heartbeat monitor for the motors. I'm gonna nick that. I am. I'm nicking that. The heartbeat monitor for the motors. Uh, I'm gonna send an email off to Joshua Bard. We'll see. Can you tell me what the heartbeat monitor is, please? <laughs> see, see what he says. See if it'll confuse him. <laughs> Blew my mind. I, I told you at the beginning. I had to plug a quad in to see what the hell he was talking about. But yeah, so uh, that's the most common use for it. Checking your motors and stuff like that to see the longevity of it. Uh, anything round about five zero five zero six, you're still fine and stuff. When you start getting above the six mark, you really have to be 
thinking about getting saving your pennies and getting a new motor and above one take it off because if it fails in mid-flight you're going to crash you could cause a lot more damage to your quad and then you're going to wish you took the thing off uh, okay then uh, you can always when you get to uh, 04, 05, 06 you could always swap it out straight away if you can afford to and keep that mode just as a spare for an emergency it's up to you but yeah, there you go then, that's the most common use for the heartbeat monitor. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you found it useful Thomas. Leave us a link in the comments, let us know if I covered what you wanted me to cover. Alright, and uh, thanks for watching everybody else, happy flying and cheers.